Welcome to Electra Online. Our next identity we're going to try to derive is the product of the sine of the sum of two angles and the sine of the difference of the same two angles, the sine of a plus b times the sine of a minus b. And here are the two possible forms of the identity. It's either equal to the sine square of a minus the sine square of b or the cosine square of a plus the cosine square of b. And we're going to try to derive both forms. So what we're going to do first is change these into what we already know what they are in terms of the sum and the difference of angles. So this can be written as the sine of a cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b multiplied times, that would be the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a uh, what am I doing here? The cosine of a, not the sine of a. Change the order. So it becomes the cosine of a times the sine of b. So essentially what we have is we have two binomials here that we're multiplying. We have a plus here and a minus there. So that means the middle terms will disappear, which means it's, either to the, it's equal to the product of the first two terms minus the product of the last two terms. So let's do that. So this is equal to sine a cosine b squared. So this becomes the sine square of a times the cosine square of b and then minus the cosine square of a times the sine square of b. Now here we can divert depending upon which of the two answers you want. Notice that if you want the first identity, sine square of a, sine square of b, you need to get rid of the cosines. If you want it in this form, you need to get rid of the sines. And we need to remember the following, that the sine square of an angle plus the cosine square of an angle is equal to 1, which means that we could replace the cosine square of an angle as 1 minus the sine square of that angle. So we're going to make that replacement to get rid of the cosines, and then we'll do it again, getting rid of the sines. So this becomes the sine square of a times 1 minus the sine square of b. Minus, here we get the cosine square of a. Oh, no, no, because we want to get rid of the cosine. We don't want to keep the cosine. We're going to write it as uh, 1 minus the sine square of a times the sine square of b. All right, I guess what we need to do now is simply multiply that out and see what we get. So this becomes the sine square of a minus the sine square of a times the sine square of b. And here we get minus one times that, that gives us the sine square of b. And times this, that gives us minus the sine square of a times the sine square of b. I use brackets just to make sure I don't make any errors with the negative signs. Now we apply the negative signs, so we end up with the sine square of a minus the sine square of a. Oop, am I missing something here? Yeah, that would be an a. Sine square of a times the sine square of b. And here I get minus the sine square of b. And minus times minus gives me a plus the sine square of a times the sine square of b. And then you realize you have a minus this plus this, so those cancel out. Let me use my rest pen for that. So this and this cancels out, which means you're simply left with the sine square of a minus the sine square of b. And that is equal to the sine of ab, a plus b I should say, times the sine of a minus b. And that was the first identity we were looking for. All right, now instead, if you want the other form of identity, then you start with this and you want to get rid of the signs. So what you're going to do then is you're going to come over here and you're going to say, well, that's equal to, instead of writing the sine square of a, we're going to write it as the sine square of a, or in this case, theta, is going to be one minus the cosine square of theta. So we replace theta and a, so we use it in here, so this is 1 minus the cosine square of a times the cosine square of b, 
minus the cosine square of A times 1 minus the cosine square of B. Uh, that's a terrible looking B. There we go, a little better. All right, so now we multiply that out and see what we get. So this is equal to the cosine square of B minus the cosine square of A times the cosine square of B. This times this gives us a minus cosine square of A, and minus times minus gives us a plus cosine square of A times the cosine square of B. So I didn't go to that one step with the brackets, went right through. And again, you realize here that we can simplify some things. We have minus the cosine square of A cosine square of B plus cosine square of A cosine square of B. That cancels with this. And then we're left with the new form, the sine of a plus b times the sine of a minus b is therefore equal to the cosine square of b minus the cosine square of a. Is that what I have over here? Ooh, I have a plus. Hmm, 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 hmm. Well, let me check to see which is the correct answer. So we're going to look this up. Cosine square of B minus cosine square of A. Well, that is correct. This is the correct answer. That means I have the wrong answer here. This should be cosine square B minus cosine square of A. And now we have the correct answer. Wow, I don't know where I got that from, but that looks like it's the correct answer.